You, people, managers, team leaders, how confident do you feel about organizing an offsite for your team? You might think it's a waste of time, or you think that you have no idea how to put it together, or you think that you got it all covered. In this video, I share with you why having offsites with your team is critical, how you can link it to your team and organization's needs, how you can build a great mix of topics and activities, and what help to seek to make it great. And we're off. Hey, my name is Greg. I'm a master coach. I help people, teams, and organizations to know themselves, design their future self, and become their future selves. I'm here to help you live a life where you have control. In my previous corporate job, I led teams of various sizes and also various seniority levels. From the very beginning, I learned that offsites were key to make my team the best it could be. Simply because offsites serve a purpose that daily work does not fulfill. Curious about that? Let's dive in. Let's start with basics. What's the point of an offsite meeting? It is not necessarily about getting more work done, which is a traditional mistake when planning an offsite. So picture this. You've been working with your team in the same office day in and day out, or virtually. The routine might become monotonous and creativity energy starts to dwindle. An offsite meeting can break this cycle. It takes your team out of their everyday environment, which can stimulate new ideas and perspectives. Now let's talk about the specific benefits. First, offsite meetings significantly enhance team bonding. When team members interact outside the traditional office setting, they can build a stronger relationship, which leads to better communication and collaboration when they're back in the office or their virtual office. Think about your team's current dynamics. What could be improved through better relationships and stronger bonds? Next, offsites are perfect for aligning on personal team and company purpose, values, and goals. With a day-to-day -day grind, it's very easy to lose sight of the bigger picture. An offsite allows your team to step back, reflect, and realign. Notice that I mentioned the concept of personal values, personal purpose, so not only the team. This is key to integrate, as a team's work needs to feel personal to team members. Ask yourself, how aligned is your team with the overall vision and mission of your company? How much alignment is there between the team and the team's purpose? Lastly, offsite meetings foster creative thinking. When your team is relaxed and out of their usual environment, they're more likely to think outside of the box and come up with innovative solutions to the problems you have. So consider your team's recent output. What are the elements of your team's work that could benefit from more creativity through an offsite? Recently, I facilitated an offsite for a leadership team in India. The CEO, Rasmi, wanted to look at their strategies through fresh eyes. So we spent two hours letting completely crazy and disruptive ideas come to fore. They came up with a lot of potential great initiatives and finally they took three forward to champion and dig deeper. What are the key components that make an offsite truly great? First up, clear goals and objectives. It's essential to know what you want to achieve with your offsite. Are you looking to improve communication, develop a new strategy or simply boost team morale? Setting specific, measurable objectives will help you guide your planning and ensure you get the most of your time together. Consider your team's current needs. What are the top three objectives you want to accomplish with this offsite? Next, logistics are crucial. This includes selecting a venue, arranging transportation, and planning the meal. Choose a location that's away from the usual environment, but still convenient for everyone to get to. Think about the atmosphere. It should be comfortable and conducive to both work and relaxation. I live in Thailand, so here I'm sometimes called as a facilitator for offsites which are in beach resorts, which makes for a very relaxing setting. What type of environment will best support your team's goals for this offsite? How can you make sure the logistics are seamless? Don't underestimate the importance of feedback and reflection during your offsite. Allocate time at the end of the day for team members to share their thoughts and their insights. This helps consolidate learning, improve future offsites, and ensures everyone feels heard. Ask yourself, how can you create a safe space for your team to provide honest feedback? What reflection method will be most effective for your team? A well-structured agenda is also key. That we will cover very soon after, so stay tuned. When I facilitate a workshop, I always ask what the team members' expectations are. The keywords I get are learning, opening their mind, discovering each other more, feeling energized, collaborating together, hear about inspiring stories, and of course, having fun. 
All of those words are a good recipe for success for your offsite and for your team to take something good away from it. You like this video so far? Then you know what to do. Also subscribe and put the notifications on if you want content like this every week. And check out the videos from other YouTubers or other links in the description which talk about how to have a great offsite. Now let's dive into the most important aspect of an offsite, crafting a powerful agenda. The agenda is the backbone of your offsite meeting. A well-crafted agenda ensures that you cover all the essential topics while keeping the energy level high and maintaining the engagement of all the team members. Let's break down how to create an agenda that achieves these goals. Let's start with the master plan. A great offsite usually marries personal learnings, team learnings, team alignment, full participation of everyone, powerful illustration stories, creative moments, personal and team reflections, and last but not least, a very good amount of fun. Begin with an icebreaker to help everyone relax and get to know each other better. This can be a fun game, a quick round of introductions with a twist, or a team building exercise that gets everyone moving. I do an icebreaker linked to people discovering for themselves and with each other their personal core values. It's always very energizing and deep at the same time, creating a safe space very rapidly. What icebreaker activities will best help the team start the day on a positive and energized note? Next, you have the possibility for various different topics to assemble throughout the day. One of them might be for the team to understand their why. This is a crucial step for new teams or older teams going through a transition. Having powerful coaching questions for the team is a way to facilitate this exercise. You can inspire yourself from the methodology out of the book from Simon Sinek, which is called Start With Why. Another potential topic is to talk about your team norms or expected behaviors. This flows nicely from the step about knowing the purpose of your team. The first step is to pick your core values for the team. A brainstorming by smaller teams help here. Then you can merge the work of various sub-teams and do a voting to keep about five. Make sure you precisely describe what each core value mean to your team. You can also have a topic about learning how to enshrine a certain behavior from your team norms. Plenty of books have been written about any behavior you might come up with, and they usually have an exercise you can do as a team. Some of the behaviors I cover with different types of exercises are caring for each other, acknowledging others, giving feedback, doing self-coaching with feet forward, etc., etc. There are more operational topics you can bring to fore, like having a strategy session or how the team can set up powerful objectives with a methodology like the OKR, Objective Key Results. When I do those, I keep it to two hours maximum, so they are short and snappy. It's about focusing on creative ideas or the most important points of the strategy. Make sure that you have breaks, at least one in the morning and one in the afternoon. And make sure you feed your people, they usually need it and appreciate it. Also, after lunch, make people move, do stretches or any other movement games to keep the energy coming back. Put elements of reflection and sharing in every activity that you do and add one bigger moment of reflection at the end of the day. I like to ask people for just one key learning or comment from the entire day. They can write more, but they should at least have one. Too many will be forgotten. Critical is also that you don't end up with NATO. No action, talk only. So I encourage one commitment from each person and that people share it with the other people. And a small gift to be distributed when people share can help untie tongues. Having photographic memories of the event is great too. It can be the opportunity to make some official beautiful pictures of the team. Or you can have fun and have Kodak type of cameras for immediate viewing of the pictures. That's a very good way to end up on a positive note. Let's talk about seeking support for your team offsite. Planning and executing an effective offsite can be a complex task, but you don't have to do it alone. Here is how you can leverage external help to make your offsite a resounding success. First, and I'm preaching for my own church here, consider bringing in external facilitators. These people are professionals who specialize in team building on a wide range of topics and facilitate the group activities. You might even have them available in your company. An experienced facilitator can keep the agenda on track, ensure active participation, and provide valuable insights that might not emerge in a typical team meeting. It also helps you as a team leader take a step back and be a member of the team instead of leader, facilitator, and member at the same time. Ask yourself, 
What areas of your offsite could benefit from an external facilitator's expertise? How can a facilitator enhance your team's experience? Next, look into consulting with experts. Depending on your offsite's focus, you might need insights from industry experts, motivational speakers, or subject matter specialists. These experts can provide new perspectives, inspire your team, and share best practices. Coaching question. Which experts or speakers could provide the most value for your offsite's objectives? How can their knowledge and experience benefit your team? Case studies and examples from successful offsite can provide inspiration and practical tips. Look for articles, videos, and testimonials from other companies or colleagues that have held impactful offsite meetings. Thoughts might also come from subject matter experts or facilitators. Learn from their experiences and adapt their strategies to fit your team's needs. What can you learn from experiences of other successful offsites? Which strategies and activities could you adapt for your team? Networking with other leaders, senior leaders can also be invaluable. Bring inspirational people from within or outside the organization who have faced similar challenges and have prevailed. So ask yourself, who can you connect with to gain insights and best practices for your offsite? An offsite is a chance of doing something great together and feeling good through and after concluding it. Keep that in mind if you think it is too much time taken away from work or too hard to organize. If you plan on having a good time, that will make the planning easier. Here is an inspiring quote from Helen Keller to leave you with. Alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. If you found this video helpful, then you might be interested in how to become a delegation master so you can propel yourself and your team to new peaks of performance.